Okay, so the Five Nights at Freddy's movie was absolutely amazing. Hello everybody, and I'm a new YouTuber, so you probably don't recognize me. But if you happen to recognize me, it's probably from the 1,645 videos on TikTok that I've uploaded over the past couple of years. Anyhow, I'm here to talk about the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and I'm also here to tell you why Rotten Tomato is absolutely incorrect on their rating for this movie. Let's get into it. The year is 2000, and Mike, our protagonist, had a very traumatizing childhood. He lost his brother at a very young age, and he feels responsible for his death, so every night in his dreams, he goes back to the scene where he saw his brother for the last time. And every night, the sequence becomes clearer and clearer, because of this, he believes that he can find his brother's murderer. Mike is still traumatized by his brother's death, and it's affecting his everyday life. He loses his job, and his younger sister is the only family he has left. But then, one day, while he is seeking do work, he is offered a night position at a place called Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, a popular place in the 80s that got shut down due to multiple incidents. Desperate for work, Mike takes on the job as the security guard, but little does he know what he's actually getting into. Mike works at Freddy Fazbear's with no complications until he realizes that this pizzeria is actually connected to his brother's death. Will he find out the truth behind his brother's murder, or will the lively animatronics make him slowly lose his sanity? Personally, I absolutely love this plot. It is absolutely amazing. But enough of the plot, now let's talk about the setting. Let me just say, the setting in this movie is absolutely 100% Perfect. All the animatronics are made in Jim Henson's studio, and it shows. All of them are one-to-one -one replicas of the game, and they just look stunning. Chica, Bonnie, Freddy, Golden Freddy, and let me just say, Springtrap suit looks absolutely amazing. I love how the movie centers around one place and can keep us entertained for like an hour and a half. The design of the wall, the flooring, everything seems so retro, and I love it. It's a T to the game, minus the doors. But nonetheless, it is still gorgeous. Also, if you didn't notice this, you can see multiple YouTubers on some of the walls. I know this movie is filmed in the real world, but everything seems so new. I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like we're stepping into a new dimension when we're watching this film. The scenery and setting are absolutely done to perfection, and I absolutely love the movie for that. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the lore. So we all know that the FNAF lore is very tedious and sometimes difficult to understand. So I'm just going to share with you some bullet points and share with you some theories that have been circling the internet recently. So according to the lore, Chica, Bonnie, Freddy, Foxy, and Golden Freddy all have unique personalities. And how they die project them. Chica died screaming, that's why her mouth's always open. Freddy died hiding, that's why he hides. Bonnie died throwing hands like a literal beast. <laughs> and Foxy died while running away. And the way that they captured their unique personalities in the film was absolutely perfect. They seemed so real in their movements and interactions with the actors. Here's where a couple things get a little complicated with the movie though. Scott obviously had a different vision for this movie, so there are a lot of plot holes and reworks of the story. Like in the movie, Vanessa is William Afton's daughter, while in the games, this is never mentioned. There's a lot of rewriting in this story, and that's why many fans are developing theories surrounding this movie. One of the biggest theories that have been circling the internet recently is that Garrett, Mike's brother, is actually Puppet. And I bet you missed the two times that Puppet is seen in the movie. Puppet is seen twice, but only next to Chica, and I found that very interesting. Honestly, just so excited to see where Scott takes this story. I'm ready for it. Let's talk about the reviews because they need to be mentioned. Five Nights at Freddy's has a 30 on Rotten Tomato and I absolutely think that's ridiculous. Rotten Tomato has been doing awful on their critic reviews recently and it needs to change. A lot of people said like it wasn't gory enough, it wasn't violent enough, the Springlock scene was more violent in the video game. Bro was a literal Pixel! I get it, Saw 10 came out, but that doesn't mean like Five Nights at Freddy's is gonna be like Saw. 
And that's what a lot of people thought while walking in. Yes, Five Nights at Freddy's is a horror game, but it's more psychological than it is anything else. Scott intended it to be a psychological thriller with horror aspects. And the fact that people are treating this movie like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is absolutely crazy. The reason why it has a 30 is because the people walked in thinking it was going to be like a slasher film. The real OGs to this series understand why this film was perfect in almost every way. And I wish honestly critics would see that. Anyhow, we honestly have to love this movie for what it is and it deserves a 9 out of 10. It did everything perfect honestly except a couple of the plot holes. But then again, and that just kind of keeps us thinking more about it. Ever since I was a little kid, I mean, I grew up with it. Scott truly did an amazing job bringing this story to the big screen. I can't wait to experience the rest of this amazing story in the theaters. One thing I'd like to talk about here really quickly is Scott really loves and adores his fans and he listens to them. We got Matt Pat in this film. That was honestly one of the greatest scenes in all of cinema. I'm not even joking with you. Seeing Sparky in the film was honestly amazing as well. Corey's Kitchen was awesome an amazing cameo. Scott truly knew what his fans wanted and I want you all to remember while you're watching this film or re-watching it. Scott worked years on this and he gave us everything we could have ever asked for in a FNAF movie. He did an amazing job and if you're watching this right now Scott I thank you for everything you have done to make this movie absolutely spectacular. We also got the living tombstone at the end credits and my theater was clapping, I was clapping. I haven't been that hyped for a movie like that since Avengers Infinity War. It was absolutely perfect and I hope as they continue the movies, the songs will also be at the end of them. Such as Five Nights at Freddy's 2 by the Living Tombstone, Die in the Fire, and also Break My Mind for Part 4. No matter how you look at it, Five Nights at Freddy's is a love letter to its fans and to the people that played it growing up. Many people wanted a lot to come from this movie, but I believe Blumhouse has already planned production for a I think three films and there's so much more to explore. I've loved this masterpiece and I hope everybody grows to love this one of a kind movie. Hey, you made it to the end. Aren't you gonna hit it? I waited for you to hit the sub button.